Sign system. I love talking about them. I also like working with them. So today we're going to talk about design systems and how to use it. First, I'm going to present myself. My name is Kitty Toft. I work as Competence Excellence Lead and UX Designer at Theatre Recreate. So we also got to stand here, so come by and play our game. That's quite cool. What is a design system? It's UI and it's UX, it's interactive elements and it's guidelines. A design system is much more. It is consistent work. It will help us keep our work consistent. And that is something we need. We will work faster when we know what to do, when we know the information, where to find it. Quality work cons um, gives us the same goal. What is our goal? What do we want to make? How do we want it to look? Teamwork. Teamwork in the design system, that is key. Between the developer and the designer, we need to work together. It's easier to scale up the team when we can talk together, when we can figure out what do we want to do and how do we want to do it. It will give a better user experience, and that is super important. We need to know what the user wants to know or what they want to do. They have to have a good experience with every product that we are making. And an example of that is here, a Google search. I Googled aim an image of a profile picture. You got like so many options. None of them look the same. So if everybody in the team get each one of the results here, the design system won't be very good. So that's why we need it. We need to be consistent and we need to talk together. What do we want to accomplish? And the consequences is inconsistency. So we're starting off with a design profile. Fonts. Let's set it up as we are making a program together. We're doing something and we want to set it up, so how will we do it? We start by combining all of the fonts that we can find inside the design system. After that, we're giving them the right naming and saying, OK, where do we want to use them? Is it a button font? We want the button to actually have that kind of font. And the colors. We got a lot of colors that we use on our design. But where do we want to make the different color and what do we want to make them mean? How do we want them to look? We need to keep a good contrast in our design with the colors. I gave an example here where you can see that the purple has white text, but the light purple has dark text. Are you familiar with Bekag? That just came around in February. And we need to have a good contrast for everybody to be able to see what we're actually making. That way, in the design system I'm setting up, I'm using AA to present that this is actually checked out. It's a good contrast. And now we know where we can use it. Also, naming is super. Add the names and it will be consistent. Now, icons. That is the roadmap for our software. That's the images. We will see the image of an ad, in an ad a user, for example. And when we add the user, what if they don't understand it? We need them to be able to understand it. So we collect all of our icon in the same place, and we can use it around our application. Design principles. Simplicity, consistency, and correct hierarchy. We need a good balance in our design. We need it to look good. It can't be like tilting over. And also, the contrast between the good and, or the <laughs> the good and the bad, <laughs> between the light and the dark is super important. <laughs> Brand identity, that is the face of our company. The image that our customers recognize us by. So by collecting them in one place, like here we got the logo and we got the illustrations, the icons, as you can see, the heart. <laughs> that is something that people recognize you by. So we collect all of those things in one place. Also the logo, the images, voice of tone. We need to make sure that our customers or the people using our program will know how we talk. An example of that is Slack. 
how do people feel when they're actually using Slack? Huh? They feel like conversational, friendly. Apple, Apple will give you a more clear, consistent, and human feeling. That's some of them, their image. Airbnb, warm, inspiring, and community. But that is just some of the element. If we go over to the UI toolkit, that's a different one. And that's where it gets exciting. Here we got the UI components. And from everything that we already talked about, from all of the icons, from all the colors, we combine them into one. We find the icon that we want to use, and we find the font. Then we add the colors, and now we got a component. But that is just one single component. But if we now use this button everywhere inside our application, we make sure that it stays consistent. That is the one that we want to use. If they change it up, then we change it in the design system, and they will know. Everybody working in the design system will know that, hey, these components is now changed up. But we can also add multiple components into one. By adding an icon, by adding a font, a title, and a basic text, we are making a dialog box. Bit hard to see the <laughs> lines between there, but the dialog box is something that we often use. So if we keep that as consistent as well, then we have the single button component into another component, and we will have multiple components mixed into one, and we will keep it consistent. So let's see. Sometimes we have to change our profile. Either we want the light in the dark mode, or it's brand recoloring. That happens all the time. So what will we do? OK, we got the button, we got the icon, and what it consists of the font and the color, and we change it inside that library, and we add it up to the new one. So here, we changed up the color of the icon, the color of the font, and the color of the button. Now we got a new button, and we save that inside the component library. Patterns, super important, and a big part of the user experience. When we got the buttons, sometimes we want to tell the user, hey, we want you to press this button, because that will be important, or that's, that's what you want to do here. OK, then they know. But maybe we will want to give them some options. Then we give them a couple of secondary buttons. We can also give them three choices where we say, oh, but it's up to you. Do what you want. And that's good as well. And then they can click in to one of those. But by having in the design system a place where we say, this is what we want you to do, and then on the ground, bottom one, you can see that. Uh, but we don't want you to say, you're doing this one, this one, and this one. That we don't want. So write it down in the design system. Don't do it. It will be much easier for everybody else using it. And it will be much more intuitive for users when we got a good practice on it. Layout. We want it to co keep consistent. If it is a header, make sure it's there. Where do you want the menu? The navigation is super important. We need to know how to go forward and backward inside the program. We need to know where do we find everything we want to. And keep it balanced. So that will improve our workflow. We don't want it on the right side. Code snippets. Many of you heard of them. Reusable puzzles, pieces for our software. They are super important. If we make it one place, it's easy to copy it from there. Then all of the developers will know, hey, that's where we find it. We just copy it from here. If there are any changes, changes there. So documentation. Documentation, I know, it sounds kind of boring, right? <laughs> and it, but it got to be done. But if we do it once, it will be much easier for the next person, and it will be much quicker to write it down. So here we can choose, stay in line with the team. Then everybody will know what part do they have. It will be easy for them to reuse the components because they will know where to find it. They will also come in new people in their team. I've been new myself. And if I come in and there's a whole mess of components and colors and everything, it's maybe five close to similar colors. Which one will I actually use where? 
And that's super challenging. So write down the decisions. If you got a good reason why to use that color, say it. Like in Vekal, you shouldn't place red and green to decide one thing alone. You should use the icons as well. Write it down. That way, one person has it written down, and everybody can benefit from it. So that will make a much more efficient and consistent documentation. And then we are jumping over to the VECAG. Adapt our program for accessibility. Everybody should be able to use the programs that we are making. And sometimes it can be difficult to have all of those rules that we have to follow, because there are so many. But there aren't just rules. It's actually impacting people. So if we find out that something is working inside the design system, change it and document it. If we say that we have some new rules, implement it inside the components. It will make it a lot more user friendly if we do it like that. And that ensure or <laughs> it also makes the code snippets more valuable if we just do it in the code snippet. Changes will be made in every step of the way. But if we do it a little step at a time, we will come a far way. And maintenance. Just do it along the way. If there is a change, do it right away. Type it in, write up the documentation, and add the code snippets. Now the next person that comes, or the new person that comes, will be like, hey, I actually know what I can do. See how productive I actually can be, because I feel like I manage it. And that will give a good experience for the next person coming in as well. And end, or end user in focus. They will have a good product. And that's what it's all about, making a good product and making something that we can be proud of. So work as it. Be a team. Do it together, one step at a time. And we will get there, and we will get a good design system. I hope to see you all. And thank you all for joining me on this journey. <laughs>